John Roberts from the community tab, hashtag Q&A. Um, what do you think this team is capable of this season? I think they're equipped to win a Super Bowl. It's up to them to make it happen. I have huge expectations for this team, uh, but that doesn't mean that if they fall short, I'm going to bail on them. And most Bills fans are like that, right? No, we're not bail. Yeah, we're not going to bail. We just uh, drink more. That's right. Uh, it's a crazy year for us. We could win a Super Bowl. We could lose every game. It's such a fun unknown. I expect Josh Allen to lead us to many victories. What are your expectations? Um, we kind of covered this a little bit on the schedule episode. Any given Sunday. Man. This is a weird season for Buffalo, right? Because there's, there is so many unknowns. I think he phrases that really well. It's hey. And they're fun unknowns. It's not like, who the hell is going to start a quarterback for the Bills? Click the bell to join Hashtag Nation. You want to try that one again? Ask me the question. Ask me the question, Paul. What do you expect for this season, Mario? No, that's not the that's question. That's not the question? No. I thought that was the question. I'll ask you first, then you can ask me. Oh, okay. All right. Then you can just steal my thunder. It's yeah, fine. that's fine. No. Are the Bills going to win the Super Bowl this year? Oh, no, no. I'll ask you. I want to know okay. what you think first. Mario, are the Bills going to win the Super Bowl this year? Hell no. No? Hell no. Why no? They're a year away. Why? That's my bold statement. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Ten and Six. All right. So why are they? Why are they a year away? Oh God, I want to hit you. <laughs> yeah. I say they're. I say they're a year away because they almost have the infrastructure of everything they want to do in their team. They almost got rid. I mean, they got rid of a lot of guys. They before you. I always think this. Before you win a Super Bowl, you have to know how to win a playoff game. Okay. For Many of these guys, they haven't even been to a playoff game. Yeah. Let alone try to win a playoff game. Now, I know there's some guys that may be sprinkled in there that I'm missing that may have been to, you know, um, I don't think, did, did Beasley go? He went to the playoffs, but I don't think he won. John Brown went to the playoffs. I don't, I, he may have won one or two with you know, Cardinals or whatever. That notwithstanding, I'm just saying, in order to win, you got to know how to win. And regular season and postseason are different animals. Just ask Mahomes and the Chiefs that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, were Mahomes and the Chiefs a better team than the Patriots? I believe they were. Mm -hmm. However, the Patriots were there so many times. Got to score points to win football games. Yeah, they didn't. Uh, well, they, they got shot in the first half. Well, the, chief, the, the Chiefs had a 28th ranked defense. Like, yeah. and Brady co converts two third and longs, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, he's the greatest." The, the team sucked. The defense sucked. That defense was the perfect matchup for a Patriots offense because oh they could just abuse them. Yeah, they could. But they just go heavy and abuse them. Getting back to the Bills, I, I just don't think that right now. I think what what could happen this year is the Bills will shock everybody but the Bills fans. Mm -hmm. They'll go ten and six, eleven and five, make the playoffs, maybe win one or two. But we saw what happened to Jacksonville two years ago. Mm -hmm. They beat Pittsburgh. Yep. They beat the Bills. And then they play playing the Patriots in Foxborough, which is a game they should have won. Yeah. You have to know how to win those games. They don't know how to. Mm -hmm. um, coach was inexperienced. I mean, it was it was Marone, but he's not, he doesn't have experience coaching in playoffs. Yeah, but he had enough experience going against Belichick. Like, if there was a team that he should have been okay which against. Which is why they were killing him to start the game, but right. the adjustments that Belichick makes is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so I, that's why I feel in that never said. You know, if they go and they they do all this stuff and they go to the Super Bowl, I'm not going to be like, oh, son, I was proven wrong. I'm not going to get mad about it. Oh, of course but not. I just don't think. Not. Would I want them to win it every year? Yes. Do I think it's realistic that they're going to go and win it this year? No, I don't think so. I, that's not. I try to temper my expectations with this team because I've been punched in the face too many times. Yeah. I'm going to stand on. It is. It. I can foresee a circumstance to which they would go to the Super Bowl. I'm not going to say win the Super Bowl because that's that's a lofty goal. But I can foresee a circumstance to where the Bills make the playoffs. They walk through the first game and they fight through the next two and they get there. Okay, I can foresee a circumstance where they could do that. A la now, Eagles? Right. Okay. Yeah, hopefully with Josh Allen at quarterback the whole season. <laughs> so not a la the Eagles because both times it was Nick Foles. So <laughs> not a la the Eagles. 
Um, I don't think anybody's, you know, foaming at the mouth like, oh, Matt Barkley under center at the Super Bowl. I don't know how I'd feel about that. Matt Barkley? If they, they went through the season, Josh Allen was having an MVP type year, and then Mark, Matt Barkley took over, and they ended up winning the Super Bowl. Matt, Matt Barkley, Barkley was a former, like, he was talked about as the first overall pick. Yeah. His junior season. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Continue. Anyway, anyway. Um, so, the reason that I say I could see it is really stipulated around two circumstances, right? Okay. You always have two. It's amazing. Well, I you think, always have two. Yeah, because it makes my argument stronger. Yeah, so here's the deal. <laughs> I have seven reasons why I hate <laughs> Tom Brady. Yeah. <laughs> Not just two, I have seven. <laughs> I could probably have more than that. <laughs> Circumstance number one is is the most important, and that is how quickly can they determine a starting offensive line, and how quickly can that offensive line gel? Because it's great to talk about, oh, the Bills brought in all these guys, there's going to be lots of competition, but we saw what happened at the quarterback position last year, where the quarterbacks were sissy slapping each other for the starting job the whole preseason. I don't want to be in a situation like that. I want it to be clear cut, they go through OTAs, they go through the preseason, and by the third preseason game, the line that they start that third preseason game that's their starting line period done don't, that's, don't mess that's with their it. guys that's their guys because even last year they played around with it in the year before that they played around with it until they found something yeah. that worked and if you're going to be a playoff team you can't be changing your offensive line in week six like you have to make that decision right barring injury right oh yeah barring injury you have to be able to make that decision right immediately you can't screw it up you can't miss and the Bills have missed on this the last couple seasons and have had to slide guys in and out and around. Well, they didn't know what offense they were going to run. I understand That's that. That's why. But this, this goes into you have to trust Dable to pick the line right. You mm -hmm. have to trust your O-line coach to pick okay. the line right. And that's where you got to be. So if the Bills are going to be a playoff team, if they're still changing offensive linemen come week five, week six – now we're starting to talk that we got pro now we got problems because yes. every time you change that the dynamic of the offensive line changes and it halts the growth of your quarterback and it halts the growth of your offense because you know in the back of the quarterback's mind they, it the, the it plays different whatever's happening out there it's different yes so that has to happen for me got to get the offensive line on point the next thing is you need to determine who your three main targets of this offense are right away. You can't be playing the, the running back carousel. You can't be doing that. You got you got to make your decision on who your targets are and let Josh Allen develop those relationships and say these are the three to four guys who are going to be the focal point of our offense. You can't be trying to feed Duke Williams 65 targets, Beasley 80 targets, John Brown 100 targets, Foster 100 targets, Kroom 70 targets. Wouldn't that benefit you, you, though, going into the playoffs where they can't shut down one guy on you? Oh, 100%. Yeah, sure. Okay. So in order to get to the Super Bowl – not just get to the playoffs and win a couple. You got to be able to win a game where they take away your strongest weapon. But we'll go back to the we'll go back to the Super Bowl that we just had with with St. Louis and the Patriots. Oh, St. Louis, you know. But here's the, here's the deal, LA. <laughs> whatever. Sorry, I, I do it all the time. Yeah, so. I, I still call them San Diego. Like, oh, Chargers. Boy. Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. I still call them San Diego Chargers. Okay. Not that old. Jeez. Come on. <laughs> what you saw there was one thing about the Rams offense was that. Um, it was dynamic because they had so many people to feed the ball to, right? Mm -hmm. They were dangerous because they had lots of weapons. But McVay was the one making those decisions, not Goff. Goff wasn't reading the field. McVay would be yelling in changes and hot reads depending on defensive alignment. And in the Super Bowl, guess what he wasn't doing? Not that. that. Because if you go back and you watch the end of the season, the playoffs, you'll see them come up to the line, then you'll see the whole line peek their head up like a college game, and there's McVay giving them the read, and that's where Goff would go with the football. And then you get to the playoffs, and you're like, wow, the Rams' offense sputtered out. They couldn't get anything going because what didn't you see? They depended on Goff to make all those decisions. Now, Josh Allen will not have that type of guidance in this offense. He's going to have to make all these decisions okay. on his own. I'm oh, sorry. Well, I'm just saying that no, it's... No, I just thought about... For, for did, Josh Allen, it is best for him to develop his consistent targets before he starts spreading the ball to other no, places. No. Because he needs to learn how to read this field. And that's something that he doesn't do right now yet. Yeah. Right? And it was hidden with Goff because McVay was calling all those reads for him. Mm -hmm. And Josh Allen's not going to have that. No. It, He's Dable, not going to have that guy. Dable's not going to do that. I No, I, I was laughing because I was... 
I mean, the Patriots beat the Rams in the Super Bowl because they changed up because New England was watching them. When did we hear that story? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Gee, I wonder Whoops. where that came from. Um, <clears throat> uh, Allen, uh, he just needs to have Dorsey and Dable's eyes. Mm-hmm. If he can get, learn to get those eyes. They, they ran that thing. Chris Sims did that uh, special with him for CBS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it aired a couple nights ago. I thought it was amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, he was talking about Allen, and he was talking to Allen. They're playing catch, and it looks like the guy standing next to uh, Sims is Dable catching the ball from Allen. Oh, really? Yeah, it looks like him because this bald dude with a beard. The guy looks like Dable, on it, but it's not Dable, obviously. Uh, was so, he holding an anchor bar menu? He or was. any hand-drawn plays? He was. It was the Tech Mobile Super Bowl play. That's eight plays, not four. And so he was talking to him about like, hey, you weren't highly recruited, you weren't, highly, and then. It was interesting to me what Allen said when he comes up to the line. And I thought it was so poignant. And if you guys if you guys missed it, what he does, he says, what do you do? He asked him, what's your process? I was going to include the link in the description, right? Yeah, yeah, we okay. put the link. And I'll put the time of it, what I'm referring to. Sure. You know, and he goes, what do you do when you break the huddle? What's the first thing you do when you break the huddle? He goes, I think it down a distance. I said, ooh. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So he gets the play. Mm-hmm. He hasn't thought about down. He probably does. Who knows? He gets the play. He calls the play, and then thinks about down and distance. Yeah. In the development of the play. Now, yeah. I thought that was reversed. I thought, what are we're second and six? What's he going to call? Mm-hmm. Or he calls this. Wait, no, we don't. I can't. We can't get six yards on that. Or I don't like that concept. Or right. So for him to start maturing and changing those plays, he's got to think about down and distance prior to calling the play. Yeah, I agree with that. But so he runs the two plays in the, and he breaks it. He said, "What do you do when you come up to the line? You look at the line. You look at this." He goes, "Well, as soon as I think of down a distance, I start walking to the line. They immediately look at the safeties. Mm-hmm. They one high, they two high. They got one dropping down. And he goes, right. Then he starts to look about, you know. And it was the thing when he starts talking about the. It was so interesting to me hearing him talk about that, seeing how fast he went through it. Mm-hmm. Means that he's starting to process it, right? And he's starting to see it. Uh, which was so interesting to me, though. But that little caveat right at the beginning, I thought was interesting. Because when I play, I'm not saying I'm comparing myself to Allen. I'm just saying what I my process was. Mm-hmm. I would call, I would call a play. The play would be over. I'd be like, okay, we got second and eight, and I wait for the guy to come in with the ball. Mm-hmm. And I hear the play. I'm like, what? We need eight mm-hmm. or four. Mm-hmm. We gotta get half of this back. Like, what's he doing? Mm-hmm. Okay, da 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 da. Boom. And call a play. And I would look at too high. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's the set? They got too high. All right, it's either a cover two, it's either quarters, mm-hmm. or they're running um, man under two deep, which everyone should run against the Patriots. Yeah, that's all you should run is man uh, under two deep. <laughs> it was interesting to see that, though. I was like, well, really? He takes the, the down distance after he calls the play? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I think Pangborn's going to have a field day with this. You think so? we got to ask Ry- Rylan, if you watch this, please comment in the section. I don't think we've ever seen Ryan like comment. He doesn't. No, he, he 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 uh, he's primarily a Twitter guy. Yeah, He'll comment on Twitter. For yeah. Um. <laughs> but that's I mean that's what I found to be interesting about Allen's eyes. You talk about the progression of Allen. His progressions have to happen within the first six weeks because that's when defenses will start to take hold. Yeah. Um, I mean that's when offenses start to hit their stride. I'm sorry. Right. And if he doesn't start hitting his stride, then. Not only not being playoff bound, they will not be Super Bowl bound. Well, I think, and I'm going to lead this into an episode that we're about to do right now, so we're going to do a little cliffhanger. I think a lot of Bills fans are going to want to compare Josh Allen year two to Patrick Mahomes year two. And here's why I think that's probably not fair. 